This is the fourth in our series Bon Voyage, which follows on from the A to Z of ocean liners. Bon Voyage is made up from new material as it becomes available. Some of this material is from cine films. This has been converted to DVD. Some is more recent film taken on video cameras, and this is generally of a much better quality. Ships are shown in alphabetical order. Quite a lot of the film was taken in the London docks in the late 50s. Some was shot in Cape Town, some in Southampton, and some taken by passengers and seamen on their voyages around the world. Anyway, sit back now and enjoy a bit of nostalgia. Like these scenes of barges and sailing barges taken in the London docks. Our first film is the Achille Lauro. This ship was ordered in 1939, but the launch was delayed until 1946. She sailed initially as the William Royce from 1947 until 1965, and then again in 1965 to 1994 as Achille Lauro. She sank in 1994 off Somalia as a result of a fire. We see her here in Cape Town. Alornia was launched in 1960. She was 7,000 tons. She was owned by Cunard and she was built by William Hamilton in Glasgow. Royal Mail's Andes was launched in 1939 for the Southampton to South America run. She was due to sail on her maiden voyage to South America in September of 1939, but due to the war being declared, her first voyage was as a troop ship in December of that year. She carried on trooping until 1947. She's seen here passing Queen Mary outward bound for South America after the war. Starting life as the Esperance Bay, this ship was built by Beardsmore of Glasgow. She was launched in 1921 and completed in 1922. She was sold to the White Star Line in 1928 and then to Shaw Savile in 1936 when her name was changed to Arawa. Arlanza is seen here as a Royal Mail ship. She was later sold to Shaw Savile in 1969 and renamed Arawa. She was sold again in 1971 and became the Ho for Ho Ugland Auto Liners. A very quick shot of the Union Castle liner Arundel Castle 
which was built in 1921 and scrapped in 1951. Built by Harland and Wolfe for the Union Castle Line, the Athlone Castle was completed in 1936. In 1939, she was taken up as a troop transport and didn't return to service again until 1947, when she was employed on the Southampton to Cape Town service. Passengers are seen here embarking in Cape Town for the voyage to Southampton. After the war, she carried 245 first-class passengers and 538 tourist class passengers. She went to the breakers in 1965. The Azerbaijan was built by Oi Wadzilla in Finland as a cruise ship come car ferry. She was one of five sisters. She's seen here in Cape Town. She was sold to Mexican interests and refurbished in 2003 and named Enchanted Capri and was still going in 2011. We see here the passenger ferry Britannia, which with her sister Patricia ran a service between Tilbury and Sweden. Anchor Lines motor ship Caledonia, which was built by Fairfield and Glasgow and was launched in 1947. She was completed in 1948 and made her maiden voyage between Liverpool and Bombay in April of that year. In 1965, she was sold to stitching for student house festing in Amsterdam. She was used there as an accommodation ship for students. In 1970, she was taken to Hamburg to be broken up. In 1991, P&O's lovely liner, Canberra, was diverted via Cape Town because of trouble in the Gulf area. It was a wonderful opportunity for the people of Cape Town to see some of these cruise liners which would not normally have called in there, and the civic authorities certainly made a fuss of them. There's some wonderful pictures here as she's escorted in by two tugs. we get a lovely view of Table Mountain without its tablecloth. More often than not, the pictures of Table Mountain will show it covered with white clouds or white mist all along the top.
We see Canberra now safely birthed. Our next ship is the P&O's 15,780 ton Canton, which was built in 1938 by Stephen of Glasgow. She's seen here in the Royal Docks in London. Built by Harland and Wolf Belfast, the 27,000 ton liner Cape Town Castle is seen here in Southampton. These pictures were taken just after the war. Passengers line the decks and well-wishers are on the dock to see her off. Did you really wear that awful hat, Grandma? We see her here again, this time in colour, as she prepares to sail from Cape Town. Cunard's 34,000 tonner Coronia, also known as the Green Goddess. She's seen here docked in Southampton. She was built by Brown on Clydebank. The Corinthian class Shore Savile liner Ceramic, built by Camel Laird Birkenhead, completed in 1948. She carried 85 first-class passengers. Her first voyage was from Liverpool to New Zealand. From then on, she did the London to New Zealand route. She's seen here in the Royal Docks in London. One of the three Elliman city ships that we will be showing here. She was built by Vickers Armstrong in Newcastle and carried 107 first class passengers. She's seen here in Cape Town. And now we can look at her sister, the city of Exeter, also built by Vickers Armstrong in Newcastle. She's seen here at sea. She went to the breakers in 1998. I hope that you agree with me that these element ships were beautiful, very well designed. And now we get a quick glimpse of the third of these ships, City of York. She was scrapped in 2003. The Clan Malcolm, built by Greenock Dockyard Company. She's seen here in the Royal Docks in London. The Danai. This ship has had a very checkered career. 
She was built originally as the Port of Melbourne. She became the Danai in 1991. She has had various names since then and is now called Princess Danai. She's seen here in Cape Town. The reason for this visit was the same as that for Canberra, problems in the Middle East, which caused a diversion around the Cape. We can watch her now as she leaves Cape Town, escorted by this tug. The Shaw Savile Delphic, completed in November 1949 and built by Hawthorne Leslie and Company Limited. She was broken up in 1971. Another shot taken in the Royal Docks, this of Dominion Monarch, built by Swan Hunter Wigram for Shaw Savile. She was completed in 1939, she took 517 passengers. British India's ship Dumra, built by Barclay Curl and Company. She was completed in 1946. She's seen here off the east coast of Africa. The next ship is the CPR ship Empress of Japan. In 1942, she was renamed Empress of Scotland. She's seen here as a troop ship in Port Said. The Italian liner Europa. She was completed in 1952 for Lloyd Tristino and was built by Ansaldo in Italy. She's seen here at anchor. In 1976, she was renamed Protea and later destroyed by fire. This Europa was built for Hapag Lloyd by Bremer Vulcan Schiff. She was completed in 1981. She's seen here also in South Africa.
Originally the Costa Rica victory, the Groot beer was used as an emigrant ship after World War II. In 1963 she was renamed Mariana IV and scrapped in 1970. The bank line Isapingo was built by workman Clark Belfast. She was one of three sisters and was scrapped in 1964. Built by Stephen Glasgow for B.I., the passenger cargo vessel Karanja was used on the India-Africa route. She was sold in 1976 and renamed Nankauri. She was eventually strapped in Bombay in 1988. We see her first with her original black hull she, along with other British India ships, was later painted white. We see her here on a voyage from Bombay to Kenya. Once again in the Royal Docks we pick up the Kenya, a larger British India ship and sister to the famous Uganda. She was built for British India by Barclay Curl and Company. She carried 194 first class passengers and 103 tourist class passengers and was scrapped in La Spezia in 1969. The Federal Steam Navigation Ship Middlesex built in 1953 by Stephen Lindhouse on the Clyde. It was transferred in 1968 to B.I. and renamed Jalunga, and again in 1973 to P&O. Again in the Royal Docks, the Blue Star Liner Melbourne Star. She was built by Holland and Wolf Belfast. She was sold in 1972 to the Empajada Compagnia Navieri in Greece and renamed Melba. She went to the breakers in Kaohsiung in 1973. An older British India steamer, the Majura, she was built for the UK Calcutta service. From 1942 to 1945, she served in the Indian Ocean with the Eastern Fleet. After the war, she served on the India-Australia route. The Paraguay Star, Built for Blue Star by Camel Laird and Birkenhead. Did in October 1948, she was used on the London to Buenos Aires route. She was completed in October 1948 and used initially on the London to Buenos Aires route. In August 1969, she caught fire whilst in London and was taken to Hamburg and scrapped. The French liner Pasteur also had a rather checkered history. Built by Penhoe in Saint-Nazaire, she was completed in 1939. With the outbreak of war, she never started as a French passenger ship, but instead transported their gold to Halifax. She then served as a British troop ship and returned to the French in 1945, when she continued trooping. After a layup, she became the Bremen in 1959 and finished her life as a Chandra ship, Regina Magna. Union Castle's Pendennis Castle was built by Harland and Wolfe and was completed in 1958 and made her maiden voyage 
on the 1st of January from Southampton to Durban. She was sold in 1976 to Ocean Queen Navigation Corporation Panama and renamed Ocean Queen. She was scrapped in 1980. This Port Adelaide was the third ship of this name. Built by R and W Hawthorne, Leslie and Company, Newcastle, for Commonwealth and Dominion Line Limited. In 1938, that became the Port Line. We see her here in the tropics on a voyage between Australasia and the UK. Look at those lovely clinker-built boats. Another picture shows her in very rough weather. We pick her up again as she goes through the Panama Canal. In August 1949, she was scrapped in Inverkeating, Scotland. Another port liner, the Port Fremantle, built by Workman Clark and Company in Belfast. She was scrapped in Osaka, Japan in 1960. Another port liner, Port Napier, built shortly after the war. She lasted until 1970. Here in the Royal Albert Dock we see Port Nicholson. She was built by Holland and Wolf Belfast for the port line. She was scrapped in Taiwan in 1979. She served the port line on the London to Australia via Cape Town or Durban route and also on New Cape ports to New Zealand via Panama. We can now have a look at some of the queens. Start with the first Queen Elizabeth. She's seen here leaving Southampton. There's some lovely pictures of her. What a lovely ship, and what a tragic end. In 1968, she sailed to Port Everglades. There, she was to be used as a convention centre, but the firm went bust. In 1970, she was renamed Seawise University and sailed for Hong Kong in 1971. A year later, during refitting, a fire broke out and she sank. The second of our queens, QE2 as she became known. Here we see her sailing out of Southampton and passing Hive in very misty conditions. This was in her early days. You can tell that by the white funnel.
Many years later, we pick her up coming into Cape Town. Table Mountain is shrouded by cloud. QE2 was built by Brown on Clydebank for Cunard. She was launched in 1967 and started her first trials in 1968. These trials were unsuccessful and she had to return to the builders and didn't sail on her maiden voyage until May the 2nd, 1969. In 1971, she took part in a rescue operation taking passengers and crew off the burning French liner Antilles. In 1974, she had boiler problems and the ship drifted in the Atlantic, devoid of all power. The passengers were transferred to the Norwegian cruise liner Sea Venture. And then in 1976, she had an engine room fire off the Scilly Isles, which caused serious damage. She was taken out of service by Cunard in November 2008. She sailed to Dubai and as far as I'm aware, in 2013 she was still there. And now we come to that beautiful ship, Queen Mary. In these Rather dim pictures, we see Queen Mary in her war paint. In 1939, she was laid up in New York, but from March 1940, she was used as a troop ship. She had a very nasty collision in 1942 with the cruiser Curacao, resulting in great loss of life on the cruiser, which was cut in two and sank. In 1947, she started her post-war career. She's seen here off the Isle of Wight. Her days with Cunard ended in 1967 and she was sold to the city of Long Beach, California. Her preservation has been a very costly business, but she still attracts thousands of visitors each year. She really is the epitome of everything that is good about liners of that pre-war and post-war period. Now we come right up to date, June 2013 in Southampton. On a lovely Saturday afternoon, we boarded the SS Shieldall, a preserved steamship, for a trip 
up Southampton Water to look at all five cruise ships that were in on that day. Not only did we see them at their berths, but we steamed out to Forley and watched four of them as they left on their respective cruises. For one who is not necessarily impressed with these modern cruise liners, I must say that Queen Mary II has a lot going for her. You can see Celebrity Eclipse in the background. And now we see Queen Mary too as she approaches us off Foley.
The shield all is about to blow her whistle. It sounds to me like some sort of cross between a vixen trying to attract the fox or a sick seagull. But no doubt it's music to the ears of all steamship enthusiasts. Another blast on the steam whistle. <laughs> Queen Mary is owned by Carnival PLC and operated by the Cunard line. She was built by the French company Chantier de Atlantique. She can carry 2,620 passengers and has a crew of 1,253. As the huge ship passes us, she gives a blast on her siren. Well, we certainly got our money's worth there.
Queen Mary is now making her way past Fawley and towards the open seas. The New Zealand Steamship Company Rangitoto, seen here in KG5. Her normal route would be from the UK to New Zealand via the Panama Canal, calling at Curacao, Panama, Tahiti, Wellington or Auckland, and returning via Tahiti, Panama, Florida and Bermuda to London. On the 7th of June 2013, Royal Princess made her entry to Southampton. She was to be named by the Duchess of Cambridge on the 13th of June after a short cruise to Guernsey and back the following week. We took these pictures again from Shieldall on the Saturday the 8th of June. Royal Princess is owned by Carnival PLC and operated by Princess Cruises. She was built by Fincantieri in Malfalcone, Italy. 
Royal Princess has a capacity to carry 3,600 passengers. The ship sailed on the following day for a two-day cruise to Guernsey. The Royal Viking Sun, built by Wartzilla in Turku, Finland, for the Royal Viking Line. She was purchased by the Cunard Line in 1990, who opted to keep the same name. Between 1998 and 2002, she was operated by Seaborn Cruise Line and from 2002 by the Holland America Line, who called her MS Prinsendam. We see her here entering Cape Town. It's a sunny day and Table Mountain is without her tablecloth. Another ship diverted to Cape Town because of the troubles in the Gulf area was the Sea Princess. Sea Princess started life as a Kongs home built by John Brown Clydebank for Swedish America Line. She was sold to P&O in 1978 and became the Sea Princess. Since then she has been the Victoria in 1995, Mona Lisa and then the Oceanic in 2007, and back to the Mona Lisa. In 2010, she became the Veronica and was used as a hotel ship in Oman. The next ship is the Toscania of Ankerline. She was built by Fairfield of Glasgow. She was sold to the Greek line in 1939 and renamed near Hellas. From 1941 to 47, she was a troop ship, returned to the Greek line in 48 and became the New York in 1955. Built by Swan, Hunter and Wiggum Richardson, Low Walker, the tide for Bullard King and Company, the Um Jenny was a refrigerated space cargo and passenger liner. She was sold in 1957 to Elder Dempster Line and renamed Winneba and scrapped in Antwerp in 1963. And that brings us to the end of part four.